Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health, and this is the fourth installment in my ongoing series, Med School Deep Dive, where I interview medical students from around the Philippines about their experiences of being a student in their respective schools. In this video, I interview my friend Billy, who's a student at UERM. But before we start this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as it really does support the channel. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. Okay, so hey guys, so now I'm joined by my friend Billy Yi to, uh, to share her experiences of being a student at UERM. So uh, Billy, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Okay, so um, hey guys, I am Billy Yi. I am a third year medical student at UERM, which stands for uh, University of the East Ramon Magsaysay. Oh, and actually the full, the full acronym of the school is UERMMMCI. <laughs> And that stands for uh, University of the East, Ramon Magsaysay, Memorial Medical Center Incorporated. Tongue twister, here we go. <laughs> okay, um, I graduated from BS Psych in UP Diliman, and um, I was a cum laude. Okay, so Billy, to, get, to start things off, uh, can, you t uh, can you share with our audience, like, why did you decide to go to UERM? Uh, okay, so um, I was, like, we, we were fourth year, right, and we were choosing our med schools. Mm-hmm. So um, for UE, uh, I heard many good things about the school, like how it really places an equal importance on both uh, practicals and theoreticals, uh, because I, I personally believe that you need a balance of both um, to be a good doctor. And then I also asked my friends in the upper years who were studying in UERM, um, and they had like nothing but good things to say about the school, um, including how the opportunities for extracurriculars were a lot, were like very numerous. And um, that was important to me since I knew I'd be looking for that given how active I was um, in extracurriculars in college. And another really big factor for me um, was the fact that my dad works really near UERM. Like he works like maybe like a few blocks away or something. So it was really convenient for my family to find a place for me to stay that was near the school because then it would also be near my dad and my parents could just visit me anytime and I could go home like easily. Yeah, I guess I, that, that's really convenient given, like, you know, it's so hard to commute to med school if you live far away. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the distance from, uh, between my condo and the med school is really just like, um, it's a five-minute walk. Maybe even less if I rush. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah, that's a super convenient. Mm -hmm. um, so having studied there for like over a year now, you're entering your third year, um, mm -hmm. How would you describe your experience of studying in UERM? Like, what's the what's the school curriculum? Your curriculum like? Okay. Um. So our curriculum is, um, I would say it's like um. Oh, the, the doctors always tell us it's like it's outcomes based. It's problems based. Um. They always try to uh, prepare us for situations that we will encounter in the future when we practice. Um. When we are treating our own patients. So they always say like, oh yeah, I had a patient who like this that when they when they lecture. Um. And then for UERM, we don't have like strict modules like some of the other um, some of the other med schools because about um, you guys have like modules for like organ system. Yeah, we're modular in my school. Oh yeah, um, in UE we're not really like that. Um, like for example, we have anatomy the whole year round, and then we cover like in anatomy that's when we cover the different um, organ systems, the different subjects. But then it's also um, it's also nice because we get to see like. Um, because the top the, the way they structured it is that the topics are sort of integrated in a way. So, for example, per organ system, you can still appreciate like the anatomy, the physiology, the biochem of it. Um, it's like you get an appreciation for the human body as a whole, which I also really like. Okay, so just to like, cause in my uh, school system, it's kind of like that in the, the module based mm -hmm. system. But to my understanding, your you guys, it's like that, but you have specific subjects for each, because I like separate in grade for each the book. Yeah, yes, yeah. So we have like a grade for anatomy, a grade for biochem, a grade for fisho, and then um, in like with the other subjects one, it's the same thing. Like they all, um, we just try to tackle the same topics in the same subjects so that when we study for our exams, we're kind of studying, like it's all kind of related. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're not like, you're not studying the anatomy of the GIT while you're studying the fisho of RESPI. Okay. So like it's kind of nice in that um you'll never end up studying something that's completely unrelated. Yeah, I mean ideally, ideally. Yeah. yeah. How would how would you say is like the teaching philosophy of your school? It's like are they more lecture based or do they give you other opportunities to learn like you have small group discussions or like a 
like um, research projects to apply your knowledge? Um, yeah, I mentioned it earlier, but um, the thing I also really like about UERM is the really good balance between um, theory and practice. So we learn a lot from the lectures, but then it's not just that. Like we also have um, a lot of opportunities to apply that knowledge. Uh, and yeah, we have uh, like small group discussions during our preceptorial classes, and we also have like a lot of laboratory sessions. And we also have um, yeah, we also have like a research project, our thesis. Uh, so yeah, like we, um, it's not just learning isn't confined just in the classroom. So we also, um, we really get opportunities to apply the knowledge. Uh, speaking of like applying knowledge, it's like because one thing I've noticed in the um, the differences in certain curriculums in different med schools is that when you start getting clinical experience, varies per school. So like when do you start like getting uh, experiencing like patient encounters and learning how to interact with patients? Um. Okay. So the. The first time that we actually interact with patients is in second year pa. But um, in first year, we already have this subject and it's called um, patient-doctor relationship or PDR. Um, and then in that subject, they really emphasize um, how to build like how to build good communication, how to build a good relationship with the patient. Um, in UE, they really um, emphasize how important establishing rapport is with the patient. And um, so it, from first year pa lang, we're already, that's kind of like ingrained into us to really like, establish a good relationship with your patient. Um, because I think for all patients, naman, um, they don't want physicians who will only treat their illnesses, but they also want physicians who will treat them with kindness and with respect. So um, from first year, like from the get-go, we already have that kind of um, ingrained in us. And then starting in second year, we have patient encounters. Like we go to the wards to interview patients um, about like their reason for seeking consult. We do this for subjects like uh, medicine and pediatrics. And then, uh, so we interview them, we get their info, and then we write, we prepare reports about it. And then um, we sort of discuss those reports during our small group discussions, our preceptorial classes. So that's from second year uh, onwards. So we really get to apply what we learned in the first year about, you know, um, establishing good rapport with patients. Oh, that's like, because that's like really interesting because in, in my school, we um, learn clinical skills from day one. Like, they really, like, first mojo pa lang, they uh, teach us, like, the basics of, like, patient encounter and, like, mm -hmm. and, like, they introduce slowly different OSCE skills throughout even uh -huh. first year. So, like, even in second year, we're already doing it, like, the second time around. So, like, I find that interesting that um, your, your school just starts it in second year, whereas us, like, first year pa lang. Mm -hmm. um, so, I get, so, I guess that's just a difference in, like, uh, the philosophy of our schools. Yeah. I guess in also in ours, like they would prefer maybe that we have like a better background on it first, and that's why we don't like um, interact right away. Mm. And I guess like since your school is bigger, it's like so it's much harder yes. to <laughs> accommodate everyone. Like my school is like True. a fourth of your size. Yeah, it, you're one batch. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. So other than like obviously like the learning in the classroom, uh, do your does your school provide you opportunities to like uh learn like learn new things on your own initiatives, such as like uh, doing research for with like being a research assistant for your professors or like uh, taking electives abroad? Um, okay, honestly, I'm not like super familiar with that. I'm not um, about the research assistant. I don't think I've heard of it, so I can't really say for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And then as for the electives abroad, um, again, like not really too familiar. But what I do know is that um, for clerkship, there are some rotations that you can take abroad. Um, but as for the process of like applying or the qualifications needed, um, I'm also not too familiar with that. But I know that UERM does allow you to take certain rotations abroad in clerkship na. But um, mm -hmm. for the rest of, I mean, in earlier years, uh, I don't think I've heard of that. Mm, okay. Okay. So uh, given like, Billy, given that we've uh, transitioned to online learning because of the ongoing pandemic, what are those, some of the challenges that you've faced in this transition? And what have you done to try to overcome these challenges? Um, I think the stuff that I've faced is very uh, normal for students. Like, for example, I've been having like, a really hard time uh, staying motivated, um, and I tend to like, get overwhelmed with all the tasks to do. And um, even like the lack of social interaction, like not seeing my friends and classmates every day, that's been a, like a problem for me. So as for the stuff that I've uh, like sort of done to counteract it, um, for staying motivated, um, I try to remember my why, like my purpose for being in med school. 
um, like I'm here because I want to help people in the future. And I, I know that I have to study hard to be able to gain the knowledge to do that. Um, so usually like just remembering my why, my reason for being here, um, usually it's enough to get me off my ass when I'm being <laughs> really lazy. And it's enough to motivate me and push me to work hard. Um, this, and the thing with like online class is like in the in the website or the learning platform. Um, I don't know if you guys get this. There's also always like a barrage of notifications mm-hmm. of like lectures being posted, um, quizzes to take, stuff, to, um, homework to submit. So um, that can really overwhelm me, especially because it's all in one website. And then whenever I open my phone, it's all like notifications from that. Um, so for that, I just try to remind myself to take things one at a time, which is, you know, it's difficult because um, of the never ending like notifications. But um, I set my mind, I try to set my mind to work on one thing at a time. So like I try to think, oh, um, I'll finish this transfer or oh, I'll finish writing this paper first before I even think about like opening the rest the rest of the notifications or the rest of the files because I know that doing that uh, will only like stress me out and distract me even more which will just make me even more unproductive so yeah I try to take things step by step and do things one at a time um for the lack of social interaction that I think a lot of us are really experiencing now um especially because we're so used to going to school every day and seeing people every day um so for me, what I do is I just try to make sure that I talk to my friends often, like almost every day, and uh, we check up on each other. Because, um, you know, I think we're all going through the same situation here. Like, we're all having a hard time. And uh, yes, we do have different ways of dealing with that situation. But um, ultimately, we just want to make sure that, you know, everybody's doing okay and everybody's coping well. Oh, like I feel that uh, that really resonates with me, especially with uh, what you said about um, keeping yourself motivated. Because I feel that in med school, uh, having keeping the bigger big picture in mind of like why are we doing this like what's our reason what's our why and like keep always keeping that at the back of our mind so like really just push us through in the end especially like when things get really hard in med school because you know like you can be a, like med school has a like a million different ways to break you down and I think having a greater reason will always be able to push you through it and then like you said like it's important to have um, a social like a social support group to and then yeah, especially like, like with being us with all of us being socially I- isolated in our homes it's nice to be able to find ways to connect with our friends despite the distance between all of us i mean it's not the it's, of course it'll never be the same as actually having them there with you in person but i mean it's better than like not hearing from them at all like um we like my friends and i we still like we zoom every now and then we like we have trivia night, a game night, and we also like like to drink together. So um, we try to make the best out of a bad situation. It goes a long way. It really goes a long yeah, way really with our mental health. Do you have any general advice to give for um, any incoming or aspiring med students, especially those entering your school? Um, okay. Yeah, so I think for me, um, I mentioned this before, but for me, the most important thing is to always, always remember your why. Um, remember your purpose, uh, why you chose to go to med school in the first place. Um, because no lie, med school is so difficult. And there will be so many times that you will question, that you'll get unmotivated and you'll start to question, like, why am I putting myself through the stress? Why am I like staying up the whole night just to study for this exam? Um, and I think this is really when you need to go back to your why. Because um, your purpose should be able to keep you grounded and motivated enough to get you through the hard times. Um, like ideally, you should be in med school. You should be doing this for yourself and not really, um, and because you really want to be here, not really to, you know, fulfill someone else's expectations or like that. Um, if you're in med because you're trying to please someone else or because you're trying to do it for the money, then I think there might be easier ways to do that, um, easier and less stressful ways to do that. So um, I think you in order to like survive in med and actually it's not just med you know anything any difficult thing it could be like law school or like even as a working student um in order to survive to survive like such a difficult and long ordeal um you really have to be rooted in why you want to do it like you have to do it for the right reasons um for me like honestly med school hasn't been easy like at all it's been two years and it's still not getting any easier Mm -hmm. um but you know i pushed through it like i i just go through it um, because I love what I do. I really love what I'm learning and I love being here. Like, um, it's not easy at all, but if you love it, then you'll find a way to make it work. Wow, relationship advice. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that that's very strong advice for many of our uh, viewers. So 
um, do you have like any like um, general general advice for like studying? Because you know, it's not a lot of people don't realize what they're getting into once they start med school and like the transition between oh how it is to study in undergrad versus how it is studying in medical school. Oh God, yeah, that was like that was crazy for me. As in, like first when I was studying for my first long exams, I really felt like I never studied this much in college. Like when I was when I was studying, I was like, did I ever even study before in my life? Because I felt like I was stud- like I was learning how to study for the first time. Um, so for that, I think the best advice I can give is again, like you know, um, take it one at a time. Like it's really easy to get overwhelmed, especially because like the the course load is suddenly like so much more than what you're used to. Um. But for that, I think, like, just try to, you know, just try to take it one at a time. Like, um, focus on finishing this chance, then move on to the next, and the next, and that. Because um, it really, I feel like you just waste more time if you stress about, like, you're working on this chance, and then you're already thinking, oh, oh what am I going to study later? Oh, what's my exam tomorrow? Again? So, um, try to focus on what you're doing now. And also, for me, it really helps, like, don't compare yourself with others. Because, um, you know, everybody, like... We're all going through the same thing, but everybody has their own face. Everybody does things differently. So it's for me, it doesn't help to like panic when I hear that my friend is like, "Oh, I'm already done with my second read of all the chances, and here I am. I'm still like doing my. I'm still like halfway through my first read." Um, like for for me, that just that just makes me panic and you know, uh, distracted. So yeah, don't don't compare yourself to others. You know, take things at your own pace. Um, you can ask others for help and to guide you, but ultimately your progress is your own. So just uh, focus on, like, you do you. Yeah, I feel that's very important for a lot of uh, incoming med students to realize that we all go at our own pace. And what matters is that we're learning because this is not, because yeah. we're, we're not learning just for ourselves. We're learning for our future patients who benefit from the knowledge. So, like, it's important that we focus on, like, really understanding what we're trying to learn and not focusing mm-hmm. on, like, what others are doing because what they're doing won't affect you it's what exactly. it's what what will affect you is what you're doing. Uh, moving on to like life outside the classroom, how would you uh, describe like the campus culture in UERM? Like, what is it like being a student, uh, being a part of the student body? So for me personally, like um, I didn't really have to hmm, like there wasn't like a huge adjustment for me in terms of like the people I was surrounded by. Um, I remember when I went to college, um, coming from like a private school, and then I went to UP. It was really like ooh, culture shock. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I went to UE, it wasn't that um, it wasn't that much of a shock. Uh, I think mostly because a lot of my friends from college also went to UERM, so you know we had like we had each other, we were there to support each other, and so I wasn't really surrounded by that many new people. But then when I in class, you know, because I'm not classmates with a lot of my friends from college, um, in class, like I was really exposed to uh, people from different schools, different backgrounds, and even you know different countries, and. Um, I think it's like um, it adds like a it adds like flavor to the student body of UERM. It makes things interesting, and you know, um, and me as a student who's being exposed to all of that, um, it really made me more like mindful and more open about the beliefs and opinions of others. Because you know, not everybody came from the same background I did, so I have to be more understanding. And it's nice also because I get to see perspectives from that I wouldn't have thought of on my own, or that my friends wouldn't have thought of. So. Um, I really like that um, everybody, like that the UERM student, bo- student body has like a mix of different people. Mm. Yeah, because I, I feel that, you know, there's uh, this, with, uh, with coming from UP, like we both came from UP, like we, we have this UP mindset, but like it's an, also nice to be exposed like to other uh, products of different universities so that we, mm-hmm. we ex- expand their horizons and like get introduced to different ways of thinking because we just get stay in our own echo chamber, right? And just keep exactly. sharing the same ideas over and over again. Yeah. Okay, so, Social psych would be so proud, Luis. Echo chambers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, aside from just like being um, like your, uh, being around your classmates, how is like org culture in UERM? What are the different extracurriculars available to you guys? Um, actually, one of the things that I, you know, that, that one of the things that drew me to UERM was the fact that my friend said that the org culture is pretty strong here. Like, there's, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for extracurriculars. And because, you know, we were both, like, kind of BS org in college, mm-hmm. um, I, like, I felt like that was going to be difficult for me to let go. So I really wanted something that, um, I really wanted, like, a school where I could continue doing that. Um, so in UE, there's, like, a mix of different orgs. Um, like, we have, like, a bunch of religious orgs. We also have, like, a Red Cross. 
Um, there's also like uh, different frats and fraternities and sororities. Um, and then we also have uh, oh AMSA, um, which I'm a member of, um, which stands for like the Asian Medical Students Association. So we have like a branch or a chapter of it in URM. And I know that it's also present in like other med schools. So that's a nice way to like connect with um, your other friends in other med schools, if ever. Uh, we also have a lot of um, varsity teams, like various sports. That's like a big, big thing in URM because um, the past two years, we are the champions in Palarong Med. So the, the school is very supportive of like, you know, the athletes and um, the varsity teams. Even the students, you know, we really go to the pep rallies. We go to, um, we go to the venues of Palarong Med, even though parang, like, I'm not an athlete. I'm not really interested in sports, but I'm there to support my friends and our school. And then we also have like performing arts. Uh, orgs like we have uh, Chorus Medicus, which is for singing and crusade for dancing. So they compete in MGMR, and yeah, like even um, and you can also get like academic support from the orgs. Like a lot of the, for example, fraternities and sororities will host like uh, reviews for exams or lab practicals and stuff. So you get like a really good mix from a lot of the different orgs. There's um, there's always something for you, no matter what your interest is. I find this like very similar to like my school because even though my school is similar, uh, smaller than yours, like we're very big also on sports. It's like, uh, like you know, like, I'm pretty sure that you have, you guys also have your fair share of former UAAP athletes, and which probably contributes to why like you know, both of our schools are like very actually like the a lot of the schools in general in men are very actually very competitive in sports. Yeah. Like, uh, like for anyone, for a lot of you guys, for a lot of aspiring med students, once you see Palero Med. And how intense it can get. You'll understand uh, what it, yeah. what, how, like, like being a med, like being a med student. You're just, you can be more than just a student. You can, you can be an athlete. For you can sure. be an artist. It's like you can't, you shouldn't just confine yourself to just being a student. And you'll, and that's probably on full blast when you see med group, med group, Mia, and Palerong med. Mm. Yeah, the hype is real for those Palerong med and and um MGMR. Like really, um, that's when I really feel like the school spirit. Like everybody's so hyped. I love you, ERM. <laughs> okay, so um, after being a student in your school for like now uh, still going on three years now, mm -hmm. uh, what what's one thing you really love about your school? Um, this was something that I didn't like at first, but now that I've come to really appreciate, um, I really love how close knit and supportive the UERM community is. As for, okay, I'll clarify. First, I didn't I didn't really like it because um like. You know, um, like news spreads fast. Like, uh, you hear about you hear about something like earlier today, and then later on, everybody knows about it now. So, um, at first, I didn't really like that. Uh, but then, like the upside to it is that you know, um, the whole since everybody kind of knows each other, because um, our our campus is small. We only have like two buildings on one side, and then the hospital on the other side. Um, so since the campus is kind of small, um, we run into each other a lot. So like everybody knows almost everybody. Um, and it's for me, that's great because you have diff you have friends from different sections, different batches, and different orgs, and we all support you know each other's events. And every time we go out, you know, honestly, it's always a good time. Like I can't count the number of times that I've gone out to celebrate like another exam week done, and just like running into like a bunch of random UERM students who are also out doing the same thing. So uh, we just always have fun whenever we're out together. And for me, that's like a big um, that's a big deal because you know. Um, Med school isn't all about studying. You also need to enjoy. Uh, I mean, you also need to take time for yourself and to enjoy. So having people who you can enjoy with is like a big part of it. So uh, as a follow-up question to that, like um, what's one thing your school had or wish, would, or wish it would add within, uh, within the near future, like specifically within your remaining stay as a student of the school? Gosh, like honestly, I can't think of anything like concrete I don't know um now that I think about it like maybe um maybe opportunities for like learning I mean for being research assistants for like taking electives abroad that would be nice because I know that um other schools do have that but I mean aside from that like I, oh probably like more places to eat and drink that are affordable nearby yeah so I mean that's like a very shallow answer but you know I mean just to like lighten it up a bit but yeah yeah, I find that's very important because, you know, med school is expensive and, like, we're all broke. Like, let's say, so, like, yeah. a lot of med students are broke and we need every, every, every peso saved is a peso earned. 
you know, yeah. So food options would food be great. Options. Food <laughs> options, very important. Yeah. For, all, for all the stress eating and the midnight snacking. Really. So uh, before we at, end this interview, Billy, uh, would you, is there anything that you'd like to promote to our viewers as social media, business, etc.? Oh gosh, um, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, I, okay, I don't have like a, I don't have any business to promote for myself. Oh, but maybe um, I can promote my friends' businesses because I have a lot of friends who are doing business. My friend Sophie makes really good hummus. I love her hummus. Um, it's, her Instagram handle is at yomus.ph. Um, my friend Ella sells sushi, so you can just DM her, I believe. Um, my friend Fred sells uh, quirk, quirky plants. Cute. <laughs> yeah, you can look for her on Instagram. And Oh, and she and a bunch of her friends are also selling um, med school essentials, like um, stuff that you need for lab and stuff that you need, uh, for, like a stethoscope, fig, um, pulse ox, and stuff like that. So uh, fellow med students, you know where to get it. And, oh, my friend Percy is the yogurt boy. He sells milk and yogurt. So um, you can just, like, look for him and DM him for really, really good yogurt. Okay, for all those watching, I will link everything Billy has mentioned in the description. So if, you want, if you're interested in the products, you may contact their sellers. Okay, do you have anything uh, else to say, Billy, before we end the interview? Yeah, so... Ultimately, like if you're going into med school and you're do like you're watching this, you're really like interested. I mean, you really want to make like a, a good decision. But I think ultimately, what's important is that I cannot stress enough. Um, always remember your why, like what you're what you're doing this for. Because um, no matter what med school you end up in, I mean, they have their similarities and they have their differences. But I think ultimately, no matter what med school you end up in, um, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, you will still become a good doctor. Like, um, it's not the school that produces the doctors. It's really the, the good doctors. It's really up to you. It's really up to the students themselves. So your, your school can give you all these opportunities. It can have all these avenues for stuff. But if you don't, um, like, if you don't really take them, if you don't uh, take advantage of them, um, they're kind of wasted then. So ultimately, like, it's up to you. Um, remember your why and yeah, work hard. Yeah, I think like that. I agree with you. I think because like it, it does. There's no such thing as the best med school. What matters is mm -hmm. what is the best med school for you. For you, exactly. It's really exactly. like on a personal basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess that marks the end of the interview. Uh, thank you so much, Billy, for your time, sure. and good luck with the incoming school year. Great. Thanks, Luis. I hope you guys learned a lot about what it's like to be a student at UVRM. All relevant information mentioned in the video will be linked down in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.